Drogba indirici Zaha Snyder Snyder gol Merhaba and welcome to episode 11 of the Lions Den, a Galatasaray podcast done by the community for the community. From all around the solar system, I'm your host Samet, and we've got the full crew in again. A big applause to the great Americans from New York, America, 9mm Brooklyn Embra and Imposter Yasin. How are my New York people doing today? Uh, doing all right, man. Trying to survive out here. Someone just got shot on my block last night, so uh, kind of straight, uh, kind of scary. Brooklyn for you. <laughs> and Yasin, yeah. how is it in posh Manhattan, or was it uh, where was it? Long Island. I'm in Long, I think. I'm in Long Island, bro. But I'm 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 happy. I'm good to be back. Health is right. Uh, it's been a while since I've been on the podcast. Yeah, you got shit busy. for it from you. Busy, yeah, busy, busy and uh, we 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 started in Gerasun. We went over to Afyon. <laughs> Down to Bursa and Istanbul. Now we're back in New York, and it's good to be back. Good to so, have you back. Sounds good. Sounds good. Let's go all the way to the other side from down under Melbourne, Australia. Bizim Kangaroo Mazar. How are your sleeping patterns, bro? Sleeping patterns are much better. Podcast isn't doing me any favors. It's all good. It's all good. All right. Good, good. <laughs> and uh, I, I think we need some. Uh, some nice uh, fact of the week again. So from Orange County, the Netherlands, historian Sali. Yeah. <laughs> Orange County. Did you see that? Okay. All right. This week's fact. Okay, it's again history related. Again, World War I. Oh, no. So in 1916, French prostitutes who had syphilis used to charge more to soldiers because if a soldier caught it, they would be exempted from fighting in the trenches. So oh basically, an easy way to get out. <laughs> that yeah. was a banger. Wow. That was a banger that was, fact. That was actually pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah. As soon as you said the date, I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, put that on would you Reddit. guys like rather, rather pay the, what was it, 1 or 3k for the Turkish uh, exemption or just do this? I mean, I know what I would have chosen, so. Yeah. Well, I don't think you could pay money to get out of the World War back in the day, so... Uh... <laughs> well, if you got syphilis, you're exempt, so... It's an easy choice, bro. Yeah, but then you have syphilis. I guess it's better than dying, right? So Exactly. Yeah. Before we continue, we, let's not forget our, our dearest member of the crew. The, the future of Turkish football, as we call it. So, from Toronto, Canada, we have Coach John and... John? John, John? I heard that uh, Stefan Kuntz is preparing the seat for you, keeping it warm. Is that true? Listen... It might be true, but you know, there's a pressure on me now. The way you hype me up every episode, it puts that pressure on. So I'm ready. If I get the phone call, I'm ready. But I am a bit nervous after the pressure you put on me. <laughs> well, with that said, let's say uh, to our listeners, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you. In today's podcast, we'll quickly dive into some recent news, keep you up to date with Gala News, maybe do some listener questions. And we'll end the show discussing the game Portugal versus Turkey. And of course, as usual, we'll also give our predictions for the next game, which is against Karagümrük on the 2nd of April. So, my wonderful color rocks. <laughs> Let's uh, see what's in the news today. Um, I'll quickly go through it. Uh, Eric Pulgar, who apparently has coronavirus, didn't join the Chile national team. Galatasaray agreed with Sampdoria for the sale of Chikil Dao for a transfer fee of 8 to 9 million. I think we said 11 before. And they're saying the transfer will take place if Sampdoria stays in Serie A this season. Uh, there's apparently also an offer for Momo, about 12 million euros. Another thing is that Galatasaray offered Alpaslan Öztürk, Barış Erpar, Yilmaz and some money additionally for Umut Bozok. From Kasım Pasha. I mean, so far these are all rumors, and if we have more news or more confirmations, we'll dive in more deeply on it. One topic I wanted to discuss and bring to you guys is tomorrow's general assembly. 
every year Galat Sarai has a general assembly with a few points on the agenda, presenting the annual report, reading the audit board report, interviews about those to decide on exonerations, if there's equipments at all, and the decisions are made then. I mean, this general assembly with the agenda takes from 9 a.m. until sometimes even 12 p.m. or midnight. So it can take quite a while. And recently, there's been a lot of news about Ibra. I didn't know what Ibra was. And that means equipment. And there's two types. There is Mali Ibra, financial equipment, accusation of that, and Idari Ibra, administrative equipment. And a lot of people already coming out, a lot of members saying that they will not acquit uh, Burak Elmas. So basically what that means, maybe I should ask, what does equipment mean? Emre or Mazar, maybe you can explain as native Englishman. Uh, equipment, it, it means like, uh, how, is, how, how should I say this? It's like uh, not guilty in the layman's terms. So whatever you're being accused of, uh, like you're accused acquitted, of, you're not guilty. Mm -hmm. Acquitted of theft or not acquitted of theft, you know, like you're being... Like, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Like, exactly. You're freed of that. Whatever those claims are, you're like freed of, of those things, you know? Yeah. So Burak Almas is being uh, accused of, well, financial uh, wrongdoings or uh, administrative wrongdoings. And tomorrow during the General Assembly, there will be a vote if he will be acquitted or not. And, uh, well, it took some time for me to understand that whole tissue situation, uh, which is pretty interesting. But basically what I saw is from Gese TV is they will do a live broadcast of the whole thing, starting from 10 o'clock. And Yunal Laisal and Adnan Polat already said that we will not acquit Burak Elmas. So they will basically uh, call him out for uh, financial misdoings or administrative misdoings. And another interesting thing is Fatih Terim. There's been, well, initially they said Fatih Terim will join the General Assembly, and now they're saying he will not join, but he will definitely not uh, quit Burak Elmas either. I feel like tomorrow is going to be a very important day, and we will have a decision. In my view, I think that Burak Elmas will not be acquitted for uh, for the financial things, and we'll see the end of that. Uh, Yasin, what do you think of this whole situation? Where do you see that going after tomorrow? It's tough uh, because you're hearing a lot of different stuff in the news. You ask different fans, and a lot of people seem to be displeased with Burak Elmas and the board with what they're doing so far, whether that's just looking at the team and our performances at that level, or looking at the communication from Burak Elmas and his board so far. Uh, you have prior board members speaking different things. They're changing their minds, saying they will acquit, they won't acquit. And to me, I think my guess would be that most people want him to just go for a re-election. I mm -hmm. think that's the safest way to go about it. Let's not, you know, fire guns at each other's backs. Let's not, you know, blame each other. Let's just do this a clean way and let's just do a re-election. You got elected last summer because of Fatih Terim. I think we talked about this a hundred times before. And it, I think it's true, right? That That's what brought him in. It was a very close vote last time. It was time. a marginal and vote, right? Like he it was, a, mar it was a marginal. Exactly. And the most important factor in his race, his slogan or his, I guess, message was, look, I'm going to continue with Fatih Terim. And that didn't happen. You can argue for hours whether that's the right decision or not for him to let go of Fatih Terim whether he has the, a proper argument to let go of Terem based on the situation. All that doesn't matter. All we know right now is there's too much chaos within Galsai right now. And a re-election seems to be the most appropriate manner. And that's my guess. I think by the end of tomorrow, it's going to be a chaotic day. You're going to hear a lot of different stuff. I think the course of the day will go many different directions, but the end result will be, okay, mm -hmm. Burak Elmas is going to say, I'm going to run for re-election. And, and I hope that's what he'll do. What would and, you do you know, as a, if you were, let's say you're a member and you're at the General Assembly, would you acquit uh, Burak Elmas on, on financial and administrative topics? See, 
I don't understand like the full details of what it takes to acquit somebody for financial. I think he's been pretty clear in terms of what we've been doing and what we haven't been doing in terms of financial. But one thing that we should not forget, which we talked about before too, was the whole cup situation. Before Burak Elmas, we used to disclose everything on cup to make it clear to mm-hmm. our fans what the club is spending and what, you know, what they're bringing in in terms of revenue. We have not been doing that. Yes, he did say, okay, we're not doing that on cup, but I'll disclose that in a separate meeting, which he did. There was a whole PowerPoint presentation. There was a whole meeting. But I think it was on YouTube or Galside TV. He disclosed everything, saying we spent this much money on this person. We spent this much money on that person. This is the money that we brought in. Yeah. But Sometimes backfired as well. Yeah, yeah. And you know, we've, we've seen situations where those numbers that we saw didn't agree with reputable sources outside of Galsai. So it's all very confusing. And I would say it's a stretch for anyone to really confidently say, I trust Burak Elmas with every single thing he's done so far. So you would With not said, acquit, or you I, would, I would acquit not him. acquit. I I would not, to answer your question. I would not acquit him. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I would acquit, right? Acquit yeah. means to Tem let, let go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I would say okay, pass. But what I would want to see is you run for election again and mm-hmm. win it a second time. Okay, and 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 John, would you acquit Burak Elmas? I'm pretty much with Yasin on that. Like, um. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I support Elmas when it comes to the football side of things, like how he's handled that and changing the way we, uh, you know, look at players and bring players in and the building blocks he's laid down in that sense. I'm with him. Um, and I agree. I think, you know, it's going to be a chaotic day tomorrow. And I think that he, there, there should be a, a re-election. So I agree with Yasin. And the thing, the thing that I'm worried about, though, is... I don't necessarily trust, I guess, the maturity of some of these people. Like, I think if there's a re-election, I think that he'll lose votes just purely based on the Fatih Tedim thing. Uh-huh. And that I'm worried about. I'm, I'm not happy about that. But I don't know. Let's, let's see what happens. It, tomorrow's going to be a chaotic day. Um, but I, I, I think there will eventually be a re-election. And I think if it, if it goes that far, I think he's in uh, a lot of trouble. And, um, and Emre. So we're all... At the General Assembly, we're going to put our votes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We've got two people already quitting, Burak Almas, so we're leaving him. What right. would you say? All right, so for me personally, what I've seen from Burak, I would not acquit him for the financial side of things. I think there's just a lot of shady things going on. I can't. I would acquit him for the administrative. Why? Because I didn't really see anything shady from him to like suggest that he's done like something wrong. With the club, I just think he's incompetent as a as a bushgun, as a you know president of the club. And mm-hmm. to go back to what John was saying, if he got, if you think that people are gonna make immature decisions based on the fact that he got, you know, you know that he left Fatih Tatum out to rot, right? So you, you guys are basically saying he got there because of Tatum. Then he's gonna have to take the brunt force of that. And if he can go through. The elections, I'd want an ele- a re-election too. So this time he can say, listen, I did this, I did that. I'm no longer with Tatum. Mm-hmm. You guys give me the opportunity to prove myself. I'm trying to, a good fate, because he doesn't really have to go with the re-election, right? He can still go through his three-year term, because I don't think if you don't get acquitted, you still get to stay. You just go to court. That's how I'm yeah, aware of that. That's true. So if he goes with the re-elections, I think that gives people good faith and that would give me some good faith. And if he like kind of reorganizes his whole board, I would, I would, I would be okay with that. Cause like John did make some good points. He did bring a couple of people who I'm not like completely convinced by, but I'm willing to give that a chance. It's just, he hasn't shown a lot of good faith when it comes to a lot of serious situations like Ishitan Gun, for example. See, that's one of my biggest issues. So you're not accusing him of financial fraud, but you are accusing him no, of administrative. No, 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 no financial fraud. No. I, oh, I'm really? accusing him of that. Yeah, well, like, not I think, administrative. No, not okay. really. Because like shady, what like what has he done that's shady? I don't know. I, I I just would maybe I don't know. I'd have to see more details within mm-hmm. the the club, and we don't really get that. Like we don't get cup anymore, right? And I yeah. hate that. I I want to see what we're paying for and who we're paying for. 
All right. And and um Croco Mazar. <laughs> Nobody can take you serious with <laughs> that nickname. <laughs> I swear. Uh look, I'm gonna have to believe with Emre. Um you can't you can't um say that he's been doing shady business as far as uh administrative stuff things go, in my opinion anyway, from what I've seen. Yeah, he's incompetent. Maybe the most incompetent president we've ever seen since Tursun Uzbek, but um, I, I really don't think that he's done anything shady or any any big question marks where like, wait, why are you doing this? What personal gain do you have from this? Having said that, I still do think it should go to a re-election only because everyone is so separated currently. And like the boys mentioned, the only reason why he's in this position is because the fight has hit him. The, his, his win was so marginal in the, in the vote. And him losing fights to him is, I'm afraid he'll, he won't win that. He won't win that uh, re-election at all. And yeah. if he doesn't win the re-election, we will also lose Luis Campos, which is a big loss, in my opinion. But okay, I have my I guess opinions. we have to wait and see. Yeah, I guess I we have opinion. to wait and see, but I, 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 can't, I can't say, I can't sit here and say, oh yeah, I would accuse him of uh, administrative whatever or financial whatever, because I mean, I mean, we don't know the facts. Mm-hmm. We're not, we don't, we don't work at Gals today, but I, I guess there might be some things that they know uh, that we don't. A lot of people at the General Assembly are the same. I mean, uh, don't, don't think too much of the people there. Huh? Some of the guys there voting uh, are just like you and me, uh, abroad, That's not true. knowing what's going on. So That's true. But that also brings up the question, are they just going to um, hold things against them just purely out of immaturity? Or do they actually know something? Yeah, yeah. Historian Saleh. What what's your vote on? With me, I would say that I would what what's the word again? Acquit him. I would acquit him of both things, mainly for the fact that I just just like how Mazar said it. I don't know all the facts, mm-hmm. and I think this whole thing is more so because of the state of the club right now, what position we are, how the season went. The only light we kind of had left was the Europa League that also went away. So it's been just very negative throughout the whole season. And my concern would also be that if there is a re-election or whatever, is it really going to be based on well-thought choices that are going to be made? Or rather just to, I don't know, take revenge for indeed like sacking Tatum, for example, or... Some other stuff. I mean, Elmas is not an angel, of course. He did lie quite a bit, but I still think that this one year is, for me at least, it's not actually been a year, but it's just still too short to mm-hmm. go to re-election or all that stuff. I'm I'm actually probably the opposite of you guys. I would just let him um, at least finish this year as a president, and after that, if it's still like, if we're still in like, uh, what do you call it, in shambles, then okay, maybe at that point we can say, hey, what is up, you know, fix your shit. But for now, nah, I would acquit him and I would just leave it at that, honestly. For me, so my vote really doesn't count anymore since most of the people here acquitted him already from both financial and administrative sides. Uh, But if I would have the vote, I'd say I do trust that his heart is in a good place and I don't think financially any fraud should or has been committed by him. So I, I acquit him for the financial part. However, on the administration side, I feel like Burak Elmas has been dealing with a lot of strange people who aren't from or who do not have Galatasaray's best interests uh, for them. And I think that's the main part I would not acquit him for is the administrative part. Because he's been dealing with a lot of shady people. And next to that, I have been keep I keep on saying this, but he basically has no management underneath him. The club is not being managed, which is also partly why he didn't or could not do anything of what he promised, uh, giving Aslan Kart, fixing the Gese store, uh, bringing in hundred million dollars of uh, for the stadium sponsorship, forty million dollars to ease the financials cash flow. Finishing transfers in 10 days. These are all things that he said on TV that he would do once he would get elected and has not done so. And I don't think, I think he would love to do it for sure. I think that his heart is at a good place, but 
he doesn't have the people to do it with anymore since he fired Fatih Terim. And I think that's the whole problem at the moment. We can't focus on anything organizational uh, or, or on the processes within the club. And about the re-election, I don't think he will go for re-election. Um, if that was the case, he would have announced that already yesterday or even the day before, before the General Assembly in general. So I think what will happen tomorrow is people will not acquit him and he will have to face some charges. Um, he'll probably then have to go to a re-election because of that as well. I think it's automatically like that. I don't think they can continue. But that, that's a bit how I feel tomorrow will go on. And also in the back of my mind, I have this thing is looking at it realistically, the agenda tomorrow is a full day. They start at 10, I understand. And it's, and it's going to continue to late, late nights. And people, I don't know if people are still going to be around to quit him or not. So it's going to be interesting in general in uh, what we will see tomorrow. But whatever is going to happen, it's going to be an important moment within Galatasaray and an important moment for uh, the future going onward. Samet, this, so I want to say one thing about you not wanting to acquit Burak Elmas. Most of what you said is basically just lies. Incompetence. Incompetence. Yeah. This yeah. is like, when you don't acquit someone, you're basically taking them to court. You can take them to court. And the court's not going to look at just false lies. You know what I mean? There's, there's got to be like real fraud. That's why I'm not acquitting him from the financial side because I don't know what's going on there. If they're pocketing money or not, you know, there's no cop. There's no, no it's, nothing. it's the people he's been dealing with. It's just shady, man. It's just shady. That's the thing. That's, that's how it works. When you don't, you know, quit someone, like you got to prove it, right? There's, like you can't just say, oh, he didn't do this. He's dealing with shady people. Yeah, I like I know Ishitan Gun is one of them, but you mm -hmm. can't really prove it, can you? Yeah. So we will that's see. Why most pres that's why most presidents, they always don't get acquitted from the financial side, but they usually get acquitted from the administrative side. Yeah. Yeah, Mustafa Jenkins had that as well, I think, in his uh, last uh, year. Yeah. Even though he, like, saved the club from, like, the brink of extinction. Yeah. Got us out of that UEFA, you know, bullshit. Galatasaray's biggest problem is Galatasaray itself, man. I'm telling you. That's our biggest problem. We are our biggest enemies. I know. Um, any, any, any points you guys wanted to make before we move on? Not really. I guess a quick question uh, came up when Sada was talking about the election. If we do propose an election, would that be now or would that be in the summer? It would be in, like, May, no? I think it'd be like now. It would be now. I thought an election would mean like after the season finished, that's when they would have the election. The election would take time to like uh, Organize, bring together. Prepare, bro. Exactly. Like who, you have to have your candidates prepare their teams and their exactly. ideas and everything. So probably I don't think that's something summer. that can happen very quick. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's I mean, why when I said. They probably already know, right? Yes and no. I don't know. Like, like they probably already know. Yeah, Fatih Terim has been uh, doing a lot of lunch with people, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, always, I mean, he always does that. So. <laughs> you guys mentioned that a lot of people are for Fatih Terim, are going to vote for that, but th there is a lot of people that don't like him either in, in that Divan Kurul that, exactly. that really despise him. So it, it, it's yeah. like both ways, man. He messed up like, on both sides. Just like our family's so, pretty much. Yeah. So Emmer made a good point, and it's kind of a hot take from me, right? Like you know how we say that Burak Elmas won because of Fatih hit him, and it was very close, but he won because of him. What if there were people in the the Divan Kural that specifically voted against him because he was pro Terim? What if they liked Burak Elmas, but because he had Fatih hit him as a guy who was definitely going on, they said, you know what, I'm not giving you my vote. Like, can't that be. be the case, too? It could be. Of course. Could be. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. That's why I'm it's saying it go both take. ways. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. With that said, shall we, uh, shall we move on to some listener questions that we got in? Absolutely. Yeah? Let's do it. All right. I'll uh, ask the question. Let me have a quick look. This one is from Umut from Sivas. He's asking, how much longer do you think Muslera will play for us? And do you think he'll retire with us? Uh, let's, let's start with John. That's a good question. Thank you. I think 
Uh, I do think he will retire with us. He's 35 now. He's he's turning 36 in June. I don't know. I think I think he has a few decent years left in him. Um, I think maybe he'll play for um, I don't know two or three more years. Maybe I think he will retire with us. But I think you know what I was asking. I think it was the last episode or when we were talking about uh, Pena. Is I, I definitely think it's time to start thinking about life after Muslera because I think that's coming soon. And even if he does have two or three years left in him, are those two to three years of him start as a starting keeper or, you know, like where is his, where will his quality level be at? Right. I think it, for a lot of people, um, they sort of age, uh, gracefully as a goalkeeper. And sometimes that experience and stuff pays off. Um, I think that's a position you can kind of get away with being older, like with Buffon, Casillas, those guys still maintained that quality. So I guess it'll come down to that to see what he can do at when he gets a bit older. But I think we should start thinking about life after Muslera now. So to prepare for that, whether it's with a foreigner, a Turkish keeper, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, a few years left, but I think we should, we should start looking past him a little bit. Okay. Any, any comments think, on that? Yeah, go ahead, Sadi. Yeah, I think, I think the question itself, uh, thank you for the question again. Um, I think, Considering his contract still runs for, I believe, two more years. Uh, therefore, I think he'll retire with us. What I wonder more is, will he become like part of the coaching staff or whatever? Or what will he do after he quits? That's what I'm actually more cur- uh, curious about. Like, what Don't forget, he got uh, his wife is pregnant again, right? So <laughs> That's also... Uh, Just one yeah, extra so. future GS player for us. Exactly. Well, we have an army of them now from him. Exactly, bro. He can make a first 11 soon. Any transfer that we get, they all make babies in Istanbul. Snyder. Falcao. Falcao. Just making babies, man. (laughs) But, um, yeah, I I think he'll retire with us. The question, however, will be... He's getting older, though. So, yeah, we should slowly start thinking about getting a different keeper. And, in my opinion, it should be a Turkish keeper because of the foreign rule. I yep. don't want to waste that spot on a foreigner. Fully anymore. agree. So sorry, Pena. Um, yeah, we should look into that. We we do need a quality goalie. We do need that. Like Muslera has saved our asses for many, many, many years. Look at what we Urjan is do doing for a Trabzon. Uh, well, yeah, for Trabzon, exactly. Not for yeah, Turkey, for, but for Trabzon. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to that in another you know segment. <laughs> but uh, yeah. making good saves, carrying them right now. Yeah. And uh, Mazar and uh, Yasin. So, Muslera. You think he'll retire? Yeah, I think he has a few more. Ye- I think he has a few more years left in him. Um, but I do agree with the boys. We should start looking at other options. But having said that, I think Okan's a good replacement. I think he should be given the chance. That's I don't know. Starts. First he's half been- of the season has been very good. Uh, but the second half, he's not been doing that well. If you look at the Demir Spor. I'm sorry. I meant if you look at Giresun Spor. Yeah. 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 That's okay. I, I don't know. You're I think. I think he, 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 showed, <laughs> he showed a glimmer of hope. I think we should capitalize on that. But in, a, in another year, two years' time, I, th- I think Mustera would run out his contract and then retire or something. Probably, yeah. And then maybe take a few years off and come back as a coach. Yeah. Can he make it as a coach, though? Maybe not right away, but later on. He could go the tougher L route. Maybe John could answer that as a coach himself. You know, what would well, make you a good coach? Coach. Well, he could go. He could go the Tafarel route, right? He could definitely, I think, be a goalkeeping coach. But mm-hmm. it, I, does he want to do? I don't know what he wants, though. Does he want to do that? Like, does he want to? Because that's a whole other career path, right? Like, you, the things you learned as a goalkeeper, of course, will transfer over. But it's it's a whole other thing. So I don't know if he wants to do that. If he does, then I would, of course, welcome him with open arms if if he was interested in it. But you know, I I don't know what he wants when he retires. Maybe he just wants to. Kick his feet up and take it easy. You know, make more I, babies, I, I, and then we'll we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Um. Next question. Sure. Fire right ahead. Sure. So this one is from Austria, from someone called the Erenator. <laughs> He's asking: Is now the perfect time for us to utilize youngsters, since the season is already over for us? For instance. Ushuk Khan instead of Semi last game. 
Maybe start with Yasin here. This is a really good question. Um, more tough than I would like it to be. Um, the thing is, we're in 15th right now. We have 38 points. I'm not going to talk about relegation. I'm not looking downwards. I'm looking upwards, right? Fourth place is 49 points. So we are 11 points away from fourth. If we believe that we can step it up and just focus on the league, the remaining eight games, nine games, whatever's left, I think we have a decent shot at getting that fourth spot ahead of, I guess, Alanya or Besiktas if we just constantly keep winning and focus because I think we have the team too. We've seen how we played against Besiktas. We've seen how we played against Barcelona. Yes, those were maybe different approaches, but I think we have the players to be able to win these games. With that said, it's kind of tough to argue saying, all right, you know what, let's just give up completely and play, you know, our youngsters. In terms of the question and like an example like Semikaya and Ushikan, uh, yes, I would probably prefer Ushikan over Semikaya, but I don't, you know, in terms of giving up and saying it's over for us, I want Galside to push into the end and do their best to get that fourth spot because I also heard a rumor, I don't know how true it is, if we finish fifth, and Trabzon wins the Turkish Cup, we can mm-hmm. still qualify for the Conference League. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's huge. Uh, you know, we've talked about Europe a million times, how Galatasaray is a Europe, European club. I believe the same thing, so I think we should push. Keep that, you know, get a winning streak, hopefully, and keep the end, end the season on a positive note, if we can, with our best players every single game. Yeah. yeah. Anyone else want to answer to that, if they have different opinions there? I'll jump yeah. in for a second. Um... So, look, we have, I think, eight games left. 24 points are up for grabs, right? Um, <clears throat> I don't, to answer the question, I don't think now is the time to be utilizing youth players. If we have youth players that, are, that train with the first team and um, they're familiar with the first team, familiar with Torrance, you know, they're sort of on the same page and we need to use them, then, of course, I will use them. But we still have a, we still have something to play for like you know we're 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 at a point in the table where we're not too far from relegation but not too far from a f- possible fourth fifth place right so i don't think now is the time to be doing that um in regards to our last game we had semikaya playing right back um you know we we have two very good right backs unfortunately i think one was suspended one was hurt or sick or something like that so we had to sort of you know, makeshift Semikaya in that position. So I, I think that's fine. I mean, it's not ideal. Of course, it's not ideal to be playing him there. Um, it's not even ideal to be playing him at all, really, let alone in a position that's not his. But I think that the point that we're at, I think it's too risky to bring in youth players that aren't with the first team and just put them in the first first 11 and expect them to play well. And uh, with Ishikan as well, I think the I think the match was against Girasun when when he was playing. He he had a horrible performance, like when when he got injured. Yeah. Of course, I was sad to see him get injured, but it was an it was it was very bad, very bad. He gave the ball away, I think four or five times, like Luyendama esque giveaways. Like mm-hmm. he he was being pressured a little bit and just gave the ball away. And that's what happens when you use youth players. Sometimes you throw them into that environment. Some sink, some swim. And I don't think we should be playing around with that. That's very dangerous. Um, exactly. I think so, people think too easy about playing youngsters. Like yeah, the definitely. coaches, they, they, they play who they want to play based on merits, not because they like him or not. And people think that it's the other way around. It's like, why wouldn't Fatih Terim or Torrent play a, a youngster that's actually good? So I, I, don't, I don't really agree with, oh, yeah, let's play the youngsters. It should be fine. The aid of our team doesn't really, like, allow for these youngsters to, like, shine. shine. You want to, bl- yeah. I know, bro. Like, yeah, you want them to, like, perform decently, not be the main focus of that team then and there. Like, if, you know what they say, if everyone around you is good, you'll look good. You'll feel confident. You'll do better. But if everyone's around you is shit, then you're going to play like shit. Yeah. And then you're then you're gonna then you're gonna get hit on because our fans are very like short tempered and not very mm-hmm. you know how should I say it they're not patient to deal exactly. with these type of things so yeah uh, youngsters can shine once we found our identity of playing like when we had right, right. With once the there's 4-4-2. a system 
exactly that's uh what i believe mm-hmm. in as and well. uh one that's... more thing with that as well is there, there's a way to do that the the way to do that i'm going to use arda and fenerbahce as an example he they didn't snap their fingers and he just ended up in the first 11 and he was playing well if you go back and look at uh how he sort of came about he was included in the first team he was training with the first team and then he was on the and then he made the match day squad he didn't play and then the game after he got subbed in in the 90th minute and then the game after that the 87th minute and it built that way until he found himself in the, in, a, in the starting 11. So th- there's a way to do it. You know, you, you can't just snap your fingers, unfortunately, look at the youth teams, pluck out a player, like football manager, throw him in, and mm-hmm. ta-da, it's magic. It, it, it doesn't work that way. It's, it's right. more complicated than that. There's a way to do it. So I don't think we should be doing that if we have experienced players like Semikaya who we can utilize and try try to make work for that match because I would rather go that route than take a youngster he fails um his confidence is gone fans are shitting shitting on like it, it just becomes very difficult for no reason at that point so mm-hmm. thing, you know thing go with ahead, that Emma. is John um you mentioned how they like Arda was slowly being implemented into the team you know 90th minute 87th minute Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. There's gonna be that group of people that always says, "How yeah. do you expect this player to shine if you only give him five to ten minutes to play?" You know, they expect him to be X I. Like with Kerem. Exactly. Exactly. So, like the difference, the difference is Kerem was showing promise in the five ten mm-hmm. minutes that he was playing. It's not like it was five ten minutes that he wasn't showing anything. I don't minutes, see. He was I don't really agree. well. I I wouldn't well, see. You don't, Kerem. you don't have to agree. Yeah. No. I mean, I I. I think Kerem has improved himself over that time. I don't think, okay, he was showing promise, but I don't think if we put him there 90 minutes long, he would have given the same performance as he does now. He's been eased into of it. Of course not. Yeah. No, of but that's not, not what he's yeah, saying. That, that's, that's not what I'm saying. You're, you're agreeing with me. It's, you have to slowly <laughs> ease into it. Like, like Jan said, like <laughs> Emre said, like we eased Kerem in. Yeah, maybe it took a bit longer than it should have with Kerem. Mm-hmm. But it, it worked at the end of the day, and you got to give props for that. Mm-hmm. And, and he, the same thing with the youngsters now. He was making yeah, use of his chances too. Like, we would put him in. Okay, exactly. we would put him in for 10 minutes, but guess what? He would score, or he would get an assist. Mm-hmm. So when you're given the chance as a young player, of course, you have to take your chances. That's the time you have to prove yourself, right? And show the coach. And Kedem, that's exactly what Kedem did. And look at him now, right? Yeah. Right, and then some people get mad at us when we like complain about players like Bartu who just wants first XI without like doing anything. No, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, exactly, it doesn't. It, I don't care what he wants. It doesn't work that way. Do we know that for sure though that he wants first eleven? Yeah, it's or do we? How do we know that? Like all he's played this season was five minutes, two minutes, one minute. How do we know that he just doesn't want an additional twenty minutes just to play a little bit more, a little bit more? Guarantee, like I, maybe I'm exaggerating, saying 90 minutes, maybe, yeah. but like he, he definitely wanted more playtime. But if you want more playtime, you gotta be patient and like improve yourself. Look at Kerem two years ago and look at him now, physically and everything. Him. Yeah, go ahead. It's sorry. very simple. You just gotta be good. If you're good, it's not like the coach's gonna ignore you. If you show promise and if you show Facts. that you can actually play, you're gonna be used. I mean, okay, maybe in some world there's a coach who doesn't do it, but. I personally don't believe that. If you're good enough, you'll play. Simple as that. It should yeah, be just should. based on how good you are, not based on just age. Of course, having a squad that's like has an average age of 31 is not sustainable. We all know that. That's why we went quite a bit younger this year. But uh, I don't know. I think um, to get on the Ishikan thing or, or Semi, again, Semi's last resort, I also rather have him purely because... We're already very bad, and starting someone like Ishik Khan, and if he has a howler again, it's gonna, it's gonna damage his confidence even more. And the way we play, actually, even though we have four in the back, we usually have like three in the back. Usually, when we it's, attack. Exactly, it's usually one of the two fullbacks who push up quite a lot, and the other one stays in the back. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we get like a three two, five or uh, three two wait three two five thing going on. So. To me, it made sense, but yeah, Simi was shown why he's not a first 11 type player. But again, we don't expect that. He's just a Turkish dude who has experience. He came for free, a six-month contract. 
I'll let it pass. You He's know, literally like, here because of Tefefe and that foreign limit. Literally nothing exactly. else is keeping him here. Yeah. Just and like uh, how Trabzon got to us again, Ismail Kubasha with that interview. Like, <laughs> yeah. hey, we got you because, you know. Yeah, he's like, he's straight what? to his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that oh, was man. funny. Yeah, it, just uh, one thing to add on Kerem uh, while we're discussing him. 44 games this season. That's insane. Mashallah. Yeah, yeah. that's wow. insane. That's my boy. If anyone wants him, 50 million euros. Yeah, minimum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus twenty five percent of next sale. While we're on the subject of price, what do you guys would accept this summer? Get him. Twenty five. Uh, no 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 knowing the Yabanji Kurala, knowing that you don't have any other proper p- Turkish winger, let alone winger. Eunice is coming, but he's not guaranteed to be as good as Kerem is now. I really want to see expect? them both play, Yunus and Kerem. Yeah. Just one more yeah. just give me that one I think, season. I think Marka yeah. will go before Kerem. That's that's my yeah 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 hundred percent. I think it's easier to replace defenders than it is uh, wingers, and it's easier to replace a foreign player with another foreign player. Yeah, that's also true. I actually think Marcao will stay. Nelson, I see leaving with a nice price tag, and I hope really? Kerem and Yunus Akin will stay stay as well one more season. But if you think about no Europe next season. They'll probably try to sell either Kerem or Yunus. Well, that's why we need a chase for that fifth place, like Yasin said. Yeah. I think Marca will leave due to uh, the reason being he was offered, I think, a season or two ago. I think it was Roma, I want to say. And the only reason why he didn't go was because Fat said him, said, Stay, we're going to do much better things. And, well, we did do better things we, uh-huh. against Barcelona and stuff later down the line. But I think due to that reason, I think Marca is going to go because he wants to go to Europe. He wants to go to a European club. He wants to play yeah, but you, Europe which, or Champions League consistently. With Europe, he has uh, apparently an issue with his passport. If he had a, like a Portuguese passport, it would be easier. But since he has a Brazilian one, there's some, uh, well, some issues here and there. I think it should be fine, bro. There's plenty of Brazilians playing in Europe. It's mm. just visa related, right? I think that's Yeah, feasible. it's just visa. It's, I don't think, unless it's a big issue. Like I don't know. something out of the ordinary I think it should be fine but I think Marcal will be the first one to leave and yeah. 25 million I'm putting on his head dude he better be going for that much he had like 6 out of 7 man of the matches in the Europa League like yep. mm-hmm. come on shall we uh, do one more question before we move to the Turkey uh, game up to you boys yeah why not Let's... I'll just do a simple one that's actually also in relation to one of the first questions that was asked so this one is, did you guys agree with Torrent playing Muslera over Pena? If yes or no, should he keep doing that until the end of the season? Since Pena is already a goner. And this one is sent by Barkai from New Jersey, I see. Yasin. Torrent playing Muslera over Pena. Um, it's not that I... I don't necessarily agree with it, but I also don't disagree with it. I think it's fine. Musleta was back. He's ready. He's healthy. Uh, I think it's okay to swap every once in a while, especially after we had, I think, what, three games in 10 days with, for Pena. Um, I'm fine with that. Uh, in terms of for the rest of the season, I do prefer to see more Pena more often just because it seems like we're trying to play from the back and Pena is better at that than Muslera. So Marcao is getting used to that. Nelson's getting used to that. Our midfielders are getting used to that. Just keep playing like that. And who knows? Um, maybe at the end of the season, we might look for a new goalie, a Turkish one or a foreign one that plays similar to Pena if we can't keep Pena. Uh, if Torrent is sticking around, I, I, don't, I don't think his play style will change much. I think he will continue to try and instill his same play style, which is from the back. And I'm not saying Muslata is bad at it, but we can find a goalie that's better. And for that reason, I, I do prefer to keep playing with Pena uh, for the rest of the season. Anyone else to add on that? No, oh, I think Yasin nailed it. Yeah, I pretty much yeah, agree with pretty that. Pretty much nailed it. Yeah, like the <laughs> the ball distribution point, that's always been one of Muslata's weak points. And... um. I would, yeah, I, I, it's, it's difficult when a player like Muslera comes back. It, like, he's almost, 
like I don't want to say entitled to playing, but it's almost that case, you know. It's it's just how it is. Like I, I but I, I would rather see Pena. I, I want to see Pena play. And um yeah, I think we've Pena has, has adapted really well to the team and the team has adapted well to him. And we have eight games left. I'd rather just see him finish the season and then go from there uh go from there at the end. But um yeah, other than that fully I think we all probably agree with Yasin on that. No, uh, maybe not me. Uh, I'd rather see Muslera to be honest. He's uh, he's our asset. He's not a low knee. I'd like to see his status. Is he back fully? Can he can he do another season with us? Uh, because well, he had his, he had his downs as well. So I'd like to see um, how how good he comes back into the game, so we can utilize him next season. Because Pena, I don't know if he's gonna stay, and I'd rather not use someone that we have question marks all over about his stay or departure. So that's a bit my opinion. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Nothing much I can add to it. I mean, I'm also uh, of, uh, what should I say, Team Pena, I guess. But I I also get your point. I mean, Pena is still a question mark. And with the foreigner rule, I don't think we should get him, honestly. But I do like the way he distributes the ball, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm fine with Muslera distributing as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go to <laughs> yesterday's game, Portugal versus Turkey. Uh, one thing to note, I said 3-1, we will lose. I also uh, said Hakan would lose the ball and Ozan would uh, mess up quite a few times. Well, Hakan wasn't that good and uh, Ozan did mess up a few times. So I guess that was uh, a bit spot on for me. All right, no should Damis get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, Tooting his own horn. He gave himself bro. way too many props. I know, bro. <laughs> just, just saying, guys. Just saying. Just uh, believe in me and all will be well. Nah. Uh, Sally, maybe you want to go forth with, uh, with how it started and introduce the game. Um, sure. I'll first talk about a few changes we had compared to our last game, which was against Montenegro. We went from a 4-4-2 to a surprising 3-4-2-1 pretty interesting but then when I looked into it all the teams that did pretty well against Portugal did play with a uh, with three center backs at the back Serbia being the most recent one and they won actually from them so I guess Kunz just looked at hey what's working let's just copy that uh, what else did we see we see well three center backs so we see Ozan Kobak actually start uh, Janer being left out we had Berkan Kutlu Surprisingly playing left wing back uh, with Siki Celik. And other notable changes compared to the last game is that Genghis was starting instead of uh, Halil. And yeah, that was our lineup. What I would say is that the first 10, 20 minutes, we looked really uh, passive and shaky. Uh, Portugal had a lot of space. They could easily pass around and they found the goal very quickly as well in the 15th minute. Afterwards, we, we came back pretty well and when I was watching the game then I realized like hey Portugal actually ain't all that they're not that good they actually we we actually did something against them but yeah in the end um, they scored two against us in that first half and all in all even though we had a nice spell to still pretty bad <laughs> and I want to actually talk about the second half but I'm not going to do that I'll ask you guys what you guys thought I just found a very bizarre first half I don't think we were super bad, but I don't know. It's just Berkan, mainly. And uh, Urjan, I don't know what he was doing. Uh, uh, what was about so Zeki? Bad. Zeki too, bro. Zeki, there are a lot of players which you could actually name, in my opinion. I but... think you could. Na it's easier to name the people who did well, post who did bad, which is Genghis. Genghis, yeah. And Orkun, I, I liked Orkun yesterday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mazar, did you watch the game? Of course I did, bro. Why well, you got to ask her like I don't watch the game? No, I mean, what time was it for you? <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was like 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. I can't remember. Questioning his loyalty. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, what sort of a Turk are you? Did you actually wake up for it? <laughs> um, okay. Look, honestly, I think we gave him way too much respect, especially in like the first 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. it, yep, yep. We were just sitting back. They just, they just picked us apart. We let them do what they want to us, which was completely wrong because at the end of the day, it's, it's only Portugal. Like, Cusco Ronaldo, he... Couldn't even do a lot against us, to be honest. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I think we definitely gave him too much respect. We shouldn't have. The lineup was terrible. I think there was too many changes. Formation was bad. I don't know. What, what did we go? 3 4 2 1 or something like that. I think that was wrong. There was too many ghosts in the team. Harkan Chalhanal being one of them. It's just, everything was bad. Bad Khan <laughs> left back. Bad. You have Janet on the bench. You have Mert Mildur on the bench. Ridwan. You have Rudwan yeah. on the bench. You have three fullbacks, bro. You have full three backs. Why are you playing Bad Khan there? Why? That was Did someone very answer interesting. Why? Thing is, I don't think like, like th- he added Ridvan to the like the, the the squad. He was there, but I don't think he was in the match day squad. Mm-hmm. Just, just that's even worse. Now. Yeah, that's, that's even, even worse. worse. <laughs> Do you think the idea was like how we played against Barcelona with three in the back? And the fullbacks also helping in the defense, and then the center closing down that that midfield to a very narrow state, so they couldn't do anything. Obviously, the midfield was shambles. My main reason is Hakan Chalhanolo, but do you think that was the reason that to play like we played against Barca? I don't maybe, think so. but it didn't work. No, the thing is, the, the funny part is so okay. We had a very weird lineup, but so did Portugal. They played with one center back essentially. They had three fullbacks and one like DM. And then they played with Bruno Fernandes, Bernardo Silva, Otavio, which are all like kind of, I should say, just attacking midfielders. They also had a very weird lineup. Like, just yeah. both sides it got me confused, not gonna lie. Nobody's happy with the Portuguese uh, coach at this moment as well. Mm-hmm. True. He almost choked it, that's why. I mean, I think we would have won that. If this penalty was scored, but anyway, I'll hold my thoughts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I have a question for John, if you guys don't mind me asking. Mm-hmm. Um, John, do you think it's okay for someone to switch systems this quickly? Or, like, how much time do you think someone needs in order to switch systems or have their players in- implemented? Considering that, you know, Stefan Kuntz barely had any time with his players as it is. You think it's enough time, two, like, weeks to, s- to switch systems or stick with what those players mainly know? Yeah, I mean, with the players that we have, I probably wouldn't make two, I guess, like, drastic changes. I mean, we he doesn't... Stefan Kuntz doesn't have that much time with the squad, right? So yeah. he made some some uh, questionable moves. Uh, you know, we had the three center backs. We, we brought in Ozan Kabak. Obviously, like you just said, Berkan playing in a wide position in fullback that I don't think he's ever played. So there's some questions there. But I probably would... Uh, I, I would say we don't have enough time to do things like that. Um, especially if like he's come at the end of a campaign. Like If it was at the beginning of a campaign, you, you have a bit more time to sort of plan these things and you know try to implement things over the course of qualification and things like that. But it, it's come down to just one match here. We have to win. It's just one match, right? So I I don't know mm-hmm. if now was the time to 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 do this. Like maybe he thought this was our best chance at at beating Portugal. But mm-hmm. but I'm gonna be honest. Who are Portugal? Who who are they? <laughs> we're we're not we're, we're not playing against. In my opinion, we're not playing against the giant. I don't think Portugal are giants. They have a they're they're kind of similar to us in the sense that I think they have a lot of quality players who don't play well as a team together. So. You know, aside from these questionable things that that Kunz did, m- my my focus and the thing I'm upset with is our mentality and our mindset. Because from the way that we played the first half, you'd think that we're, we were playing against eleven gods, but we're playing against Portugal. And who are Portugal? Who are they? We're we're, we're playing absolutely terrified in every single possession. Urjan gets the ball, kicks it away every single time. Mm-hmm. Chalad has the ball, kicks it away every single time. But what's the reason? I I, I don't get the reason for they it. They don't have any camera. They look like they played with like each other for the first time. Like nobody knew what to do. Yep. Everybody's like, I'm just gonna eat this shit away and not deal with it. I don't want anything falling back we, on me. Yeah, yep, yep. we legitimately yeah, exactly right. we legitimately didn't get across like the halfway line for like the first fifty minutes. We. To so awful. Just terrified. I think no the first terrified. time we're doing exactly we, like, oh, the and first time we crossed it was a throw-in. <laughs> go, <laughs> pathetic, go. pathetic, and yeah. we're playing as if we don't have players that can really hurt Portugal. We do. We have players that can cause a lot of problems. Jengiz, Kerem. We can cause a lot of a lot of issues for them. And 
that that's what it comes down to for me. Sometimes it's not about tactics. It's, it's not about that sometimes. It's about your mentality and you know how you approach the match in that sense. And our mentality is very poor. And it's like ever since we played against Italy, it's like every time we play against a decent team now, this is what we're doing. But where's the confidence though? Because we have, we have quality players. So I can't wrap my head around why we're playing this way. And the second we sort of switched on a little bit more and started playing properly, then we got into all sorts of positions, shooting, op- shooting chances outside the box, crossing the ball, corners. All of a sudden, we realized Portugal's not that good. They're not the team we thought they were. So they were we, sweating. Of course. So if we came into the match with a different mindset and actually looking like we wanted to win, then I think we would have had a different result. And of course, there's moments like the penalty miss and stuff like that. Those are huge moments. But we went down 2-0 for no reason, for absolutely no reason. They scored two goals that should have never happened. So that's what makes me upset. You know, it's not about tactics sometimes. It's about uh, how much you want to win and how much you're willing to fight for it. And that, I, that's what disappoints me. Go ahead, Sadi. Yeah, may I use uh, a very random quote on what you just told us? From, sure. Well, Sun Tzu, I don't know if you know it, The Art of War. Yep. There was a quote that is stated as, Victorious warriors win first and then go to war, while defeated warriors go to war first and then seek to win. That's exactly what happened with us. Yep. We played so afraid, so cautiously, and when we did actually try to attack, we did see then they hey these guys are actually not all that you know, we can actually do it. But uh, it's just I don't know, man. The, the the fight, the morale wasn't just there for the first. There has few to minutes. be a culture change. That's basically change what decided here. it. Yeah, yeah definitely. Exactly. There has to be a culture change. There has got to be a culture change because Kunz, Stefan Kunz can come in and he can make any changes he wants and we can play any way we want but it, 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 it's all irrelevant it, it, may, it won't make any difference if we don't have the mindset there you know how are we going to do anything mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what tournament we go to it could be the World Cup the Euro Cup we're going to get put in a group with a giant and then you know like look at the Euro Cup we have Italy who's a giant we have Switzerland but again in my opinion who's Switzerland who are they? <laughs> Who are they? Like, why do we give these teams so much respect? You know, that, that, that's what bother, it bothers me so much. So unless there's a culture change, I think we're just going to keep seeing this every tournament. I think we'll get to the end of qualification and then, you know, it, there's going to be a match where we have to win and we, we're not going to be able to we do choke. it. We yeah. choke. We never won from these qualifiers, did you know that, in our history. We never did from a playoff. Like where yeah, we just had yeah. to win one match and yeah. then go through. We never did that's it. That's not true. What Always. about the Euros? The Cedric free kick against no, that Iceland. was a that was a group that was game. That group, though. no, that was not a playoff. I yeah, it wasn't was a, a playoff game. It was just the last group game. Was it? Exactly. I thought it was yeah. a playoff game. No, no, it felt like a playoff. That's for sure. You know, because everything I remember, we had to score, and this team had to do that. This team, there were like so many facts. Everything aligned. We're always perfectly. doing some crazy like mathematics. Exactly. I hate that. Um, uh, on the match again. Um, Okay, the mentality sucked, that's for sure. But what also didn't help, I think Urja was really poor that game. <laughs> Bro, the first save... Okay, the first save had in Ace, the first goal, I mean. But second goal, to me at least, that should be, like, saved, right? Like, he's already at the right side of the goal. He's standing at the correct side. But it somehow still went in. And from Jada, of all people, like, a midget trying to basically head it in. Well, he was completely free to fucking head it, you know, so uh, easier that way. What does Yasin think? He's been quiet. Listening to you guys is really nice. You guys all make really good points, and I kind of agree with everything you guys have said, from the mentality to the tactics. I think to kind of summarize it in one line, I think we didn't score enough because of our mentality, and we let up three goals because of our tactics and our player selection. I mean, you have three walls in our defense, Mede, Ozan, and Chalar, but I don't think they played three at the back, though, like, in cohesion. And because of that, it made our backs look even worse. I mean, Badkan mm-hmm. is already not a left wing back, so you already have low expectations. But many times I saw him confused on going to help in the midfield, because he's a midfielder, going to help in the attack, uh, you know, doing an overlapping run, a bindirme with Kerem. Or coming back and stopping uh, Portugal's right wing, making an overlapping run behind Chalar. 
there was a lot of confusion in the center defensive midfield area for us. Because you have Orkan Kokkyukchu and you have Hakan, who neither of which are those like midfielders that are going to win balls, go into tackles. Neither of them are center defensive midfielders. So you're expecting your three center backs to not only play center back, but you're also expecting them to play that CDM role. And I think that's where we messed up. Because Everyone Portugal was listened. out of position. Even when Dorukan came, uh, Dorukan, he played on right wing. He's a midfielder, right? Yeah, there was no proper formation and plan. I think that's where we screwed up. And it didn't help that Portugal, every time they attacked, they came at least in four, usually five. You have Bernardo Silva, you have Bruno Fernandes, Cristiano Ronaldo, Diego Jota. All these players are a threat. You have to man mark each one of these guys or at least have your eyes on them. And when you have three center backs trying to do that, one left wing back who's not a left wing back, and Zeki who's trying to go up and forward and back, try and do this, you're going to have a bad time. They, they scored three goals, but I think they could have scored way more than that. Um, oh, definitely. I would have I loved, I mean, maybe it's a hot take, but I would have loved to see Bakun Kutlu in the midfield. Mm-hmm. Whether, whether you're going to pick out Orkan or Hakan, most likely you're going to pick, I think Orkan played a little bit better. Hakan so has been Hakan. always shit for the national team. Just put Berkan mm-hmm. instead of Hakan. It would have been so yeah. much better. The, the reason why I like Berkan, especially in this role, is because, I mean, we saw it live against Barcelona and Besiktas in Istanbul. That guy is always first to the ball. If he sees a player that's about to receive the ball on the opposing team, he's there. He, he doesn't watch. He's not one of those players that watches and hopes, the, you know, your teammate is going to be there running to the ball, you know, he's not a watcher, he's a doer. He gets to that position, and even if he's not the best ball winner, if he, even if he's not the best passer, the best vision, he's going to hustle to that position and make that opposing team uncomfortable. And we did not have a single midfielder doing that today, uh, yesterday. And that's why, you know, I still give a little bit of credit to Ozan Kabak, even though he did make mistakes yesterday. He still tried to fulfill that role. You saw him always trying to get behind the midfielder's ass and, you know, try and win that ball. He did make mistakes, but, you know, I, I think the three at the back was the biggest issue yesterday. I, I believe that if we played four at the back, mm-hmm. we would have had a better chance. I agree with all you guys. Portugal was not good, but we were worse. That's why we didn't win the game yesterday. Um, yeah, I, I, I hope that Kunz and the team kind of learn something from this. If, if you want to play three at the back, fine. You have the players, but you have to practice a little bit more often. I don't think the World Cup qualifier against Portugal is a game to do that end away. What did you um, guys uh, think of uh, Burak taking the pen? May I say one thing before we uh, mm-hmm. ask that question? Um, Yasin, can you, can you pronounce those five Portuguese players again no, for me? No. That sounded so good. I'm not going to lie. It so smooth. Activi? Bruno Fernandes, Otavio. Diogo Jota? So, so uh, Burak and by the way, it's Orkan. He said like Orkan four times or so. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Burak Yilmaz Burak. taking the penalty. What did you guys think? Uh, I bro, when he, when he or no, you go first, Emre. I started way too often now. So uh, okay. Well, all I'm gonna say is, he's, I feel like he should have just let Ennis take it. But like maybe in the back of his head, he's like. You know, I'm 36, 37, however old he is. Let me try to take this. That's too much pressure for NS. You know, I'm like trying to rationalize it, but NS actually wanted to take that penalty. I think he was confident of he won that penalty. He should have taken it. But like Burak coming and doing that, like I don't know if he thinks he's like the 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 future of the team or something. Sometimes <laughs> he acts like that, and he and the thing is. Burak ha- like has an impeccable penalty record. Like, he yep. scores most of his penalties. So the penalty he took is just insane to me. He should have just left that to NS. I think it's karma, man. Karma will eat you up like that. Look, hindsight is a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. But when Burak put it down, I already felt like for some reason he's going to miss. And the way he did it... I think he just went for a way too risky shot. It, it is the 85th minute. What I would have done, but again, hindsight's a beautiful thing, right? But what I would have done, I would just shoot 
right through the middle, just low. He's not gonna stand in the middle. That's I don't think a keeper would do that at that minute. He'll probably choose a side, one of the also, two. Also, that keeper is not their main keeper. He's like one like young player. Exactly. That wasn't, that wasn't their main keeper. Yeah, normally it's uh, Patricio, right? Or they also have that other guy, Jose Sa, I think. They were I missing like eight people or something. Yeah, but I don't know, man. The thing, what I didn't realize though, apparently he had he actually hit the woodwork. When I saw it, I thought he just completely missed it, but he did hit the post. Apparently, it just bounced off it. So, for me, uh, it sucks. It's easy to speak after the facts. He's the striker of the team. Like you guys said, impeccable penalty taking on him. Always scored very nicely, confidently. And it's easy to say, oh, God, why did he take it? He should, NS should have mm -hmm. taken it. But imagine it the other way around. If NS would have missed that, everyone would complain, why the hell didn't Burak take it? So uh, I'm all okay with him taking it. Uh, and he can take on the heat as well. Uh, it was his last game, like he said after the interview. He's retiring from the national team making way for the, the, the others, like NS Renal, <laughs> which is funny, he also mentioned Kenan Karaman. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what the fuck? Are you making way for him? No. Stay. <laughs> but, yeah, oh, so I, I'm fine. Like, I think everyone is overreacting. Of course, it's saddening that he missed, but hey, it happens, man. I mean, it's sad because we haven't been in the World Cup for 20 years. Yeah. It's been so long. Just like um, some people mentioned, hey, I don't want to be 30 and see my first World Cup by now. Like, because, look, I was too young to remember the 2002 World Cup. I didn't see it. I was uh, four, no, five at the time. So I don't remember much. I just want to see us play in the World Cup for once. Because it's a tournament we only qualified two times for. 2002 and then 1954 or whatever. So I don't want this to be another 50-year gap. I want to see it when I'm a bit younger and not, mm. you know... When I'm 60. <laughs> John? Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I think he was, he, he was the right man to take the penalty. But look, taking penalties is a mind game. That's all it is. It's a mind game. You have to get over yourself. You have to get over the environment. You have to get over... You're playing a mind game with the keeper. There's a lot of things that go into it. And I'm going to be honest... I really thought that he would have a bit more composure to get it done for us. It's tricky. I, I hate to see him miss. I, I hate to see him. Uh, it's sad to see him leave the national team. Uh, even though it is time for, for him to do that, I think it's still sad to see. But I don't know, man. I, I thought he was going to do it. Um, but he just, I don't know what it was. I don't know if the moment got to him. I, I don't know what he was thinking. I, I wish he played it a bit more safe. I wish he just had a low, hard penalty. Inexperienced mm -hmm. goalkeeper, he's feeling the moment as well. The goalkeeper's feeling the moment too. It's not just him. The goalkeeper's nervous too. So I don't know. I, 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 I wish he made a little bit of a better decision instead of trying to go high. But uh, it is what it is, man. It's, we were close, but not close enough. And yeah, I don't know. Ask yourself too, if, if, we, leave, if we let it come down to that moment, you know, how much of this do we deserve actually? You know, what, what do you think is going to happen for 45 minutes when you play terrified, absolutely shaking in your boots, terrified? What, what do you think is going to happen? So, I, I, I don't know. It, it sucks to see, but it is what it is. On, on to the next one, you know? People underestimate how important mental, like, being is, man. They, they always say, oh, these footballers are professionals. I mean, but yeah, they're not robots. They're, they got human feelings, too. Emotions and, like, the heat of the moment affects every like mo like thing you make every decision it affects that of course i mean think about it how would you feel if you were in that moment and you know your entire country is watching the whole country is watching the whole country is on your shoulders it's very difficult man it's 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 very hard a p penalty is I, I i in my opinion i i say it has very little to do with your quality if if you're a professional football and you're and you're that close to the net anyone can, i even i can score a penalty but it, it's, it's the mental aspect. That's what's so difficult about it. It's so difficult. And I was telling my brother on the, when we were driving home, uh, the difference between players like Burak Yilmaz and players like Ronaldo is that it doesn't matter if Jesus himself came down, put on the goalkeeper gloves, Ronaldo will find a way to score in that moment. He'll find a way. He'll find a way. He's built for moments like that. 
right? Yeah. And that's the difference between that level of, of footballer. You know, it's the mental aspect. And Ronaldo is he's mentally impenetrable. So, yeah, it is what it is. It's disappointing, man. So, we have to round up slowly. Do you have any last few points you want to mention about the game? No, we'll see everyone. Uh, I guess we have the Nations League. No matter how bad we feel about this game, I'm just thinking how bad Italy must be feeling right now. Italian fans oh, losing God. against Macedonia. <laughs> yes. Yeah, terrible, terrible. Well, On that, now that you say it, it just came into my mind. Why was this a one-leg tie? And also, we played away. Isn't that kind of unfair? <laughs> Shouldn't it just be like a two-leg game? I don't well, know, if man. we would have won, we played in our home. Well, I don't think we play at home, home, but like a neutral area. Because mm-hmm. I don't know why. Why did Portugal get to play at you know the? It's a Portuguese stadium, right? Somewhere in it, Portugal. It was yeah. it, the, the not way just that, them. Everyone, I everyone who played at home, yeah, played yeah. actually at home, not yeah. at a neutral ground. I I think it's the way they did the draw. If you were on one, like if you were on one side of the bracket or whatever you got to play home for that match. So, like, we, if if we would have got past Portugal, we would have played at home in the next game. But the home for our game would be somewhere in, like, uh, Uzbekistan or something. It wasn't in Turkey. That's what I read. Or I, I, no, I it was, no, no it, it, you've misread. It, we would have played at home. Definitely, yeah. we would have played at home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, don't complain to FIFA, I'd say. I'm going to go complain to TFF. All right, guys. Karagümrük. Next week, gala game. Our players will be nicely rested, so I'm expecting some good things from them. Uh, looking at Karagumruk's form, I'd say we'll we'll probably win to zero. I think um, our defense will be rested. Uh, Torrent will know what to do. Karagumruk hasn't been in great form lately, so I'm saying two zero for for gala. We're playing at home, so yeah, I'll I'll uh, I'll jump in. I think. Um... I'm going to take us to win, um, I'm going to say 2-1. I'm going to say 2-1. We're at home, so I think we'll get it done. But um, okay. I think I just have this little, this little, I don't know what to call him. There's a little bug in my head. His name is Emre Mor, and I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know what's going to happen. You know, I, I, think he, uh, I think he might play against us with something to prove. So I have. I think he might score against us. I've. I, I'm. I'm foreseeing that. Someone's definitely scoring against us. We haven't kept a clean sheet, and I don't know. I can't remember Antalya. So, uh, well, with that said, I think we'll win. We kept a clean sheet against Barca. That's yeah. in the Europa League. <laughs> That's, okay, true. Pal? That's true. Still can't yeah. believe that. I think we'll win. I think we'll win. Though I am concerned because Galatasaray usually after breaks are terrible. Even at home, we like play like absolute trash. But I think we'll win this one. I think we need to win this one. So I'm going to say 2-1 win as well. I'm going to jump on that train as well. I'm saying 2-1. As we at home in the league at least. Our last three games were all wins. Speak about the league again. And their away games were pretty much all us. Except against Basak Shir. Mm-hmm. Um... I know last game was a 1-1, but this time we're going to turn it around and make it a 2-1. So still no clean sheet, but we'll get it done. All right. Yasin? Uh, tough, because a lot of our starters are coming back from international break, so they're not going to have proper rest. I'm going to say 2-1 as well. 2-1 win. All right. And uh, that's also what uh, Mazar said. Uh, he again had to leave. Uh, his kangaroo called him up. Needed to do something for him, so. Kangaroo duties mm-hmm. call. Exactly, exactly. All right, I think that wraps up the show of today. Um, like to thank you everyone for listening. As always, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter at the Lions Den GS is our handle. We wish you all a very pleasant week. Goodbye. <laughs>